You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Television addict! Television addict! Television addict! Uh. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Ken Reed here. This is TV Guidance Counselor. It's a bonus edition. I uh, said previously for regular listener that June is my birthday month, and as a result, I am putting out more episodes as a gift to you, the listener. I have an excellent, excellent, excellent episode today. I am very excited for my guest. It's Mr. Fred Schneider. You probably know Fred from his solo work, but he's also from the B-52s, a huge TV guy, loves sci-fi. I've always loved his work, always loved his bands. Uh, just Fred is a great record he put out, uh, I guess, in the 90s now. She's a field. Uh, but they were, he was in town doing some shows with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. The B-52s playing with a full orchestra, and he was nice enough to sit down and talk to me, and I cannot thank him enough. If you're not a regular listener of the show, and this is your first time checking it out because you're a fan of Fred's, uh, congratulations, you have excellent taste in uh, fandom. But the concept of this show is uh, I'm a comedian. Uh, that's not a concept. That's a fact. I'm a Boston-based comedian. I love television, uh, classic television mostly, pre-millennium, uh, usually focus on the 70s and 80s, but uh, go earlier or later sometimes. Uh, I own more or less every edition of TV Guide. Someone comes over my house or I go to them. They pick an old edition of TV Guide. They flip through it. They talk about what they'd watch that week in history. And that is what we do today uh, with Mr. Fred Schneider. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear this episode, because I very, very much enjoyed recording it. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode of TV Guidance Counselor with my guest, the one and only Mr. Fred Schneider. TV is my friend, and it has been always there for me in time of need. Fred Schneider, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for doing this. We're uh, high atop Boston right now. <laughs> it almost looks like a pretty city, which is rare. <laughs> yeah. It's a little industrial around here, but it'll do. It is, it is. This is the, uh, I don't know if you ever watched the show Spencer for Hire in the 80s. No. It was uh, Robert Urick was a Boston private detective. Oh, okay. And there were two locations they always shot at. This one, and then down in like the industrial complex where people used to dump bodies. But like, oh, every, okay. <laughs> this was on the outskirts of what they used to call the combat zone. Oh, uh, Which okay. was like our 40 seconds. Well, now it's Neiman Marcus. Now it's so. Neiman Marcus. <laughs> so it's very, very different now. Uh, so I've plied you with sort of a couple of stacks of TV guides here. We yes. Like sort of 50s, 60s, I imagine, was, was sort of the, the childhood era that you uh, maybe watched the most stuff but you're saying your mom kind of capitalized yeah my mom TV. yeah she hogged the well we had to turn the dial so she could watch whatever she wanted to watch <laughs> right, and right. we were lucky if uh we could watch what we wanted to watch because we certainly didn't want to watch what she wanted to watch did but. you have a lot of siblings was it a big family uh let's see by let's see what year is that this? one's probably 69 or yeah, 68 69 or oh wait 68. here we go 68 yeah, yeah by then there were uh six of us wow Wow. So did you guys have to kind of come together as a united front to make the case for watching something? Or was she just like, no, now you have to watch combat. You have to watch is <laughs> like, oh, God, do we have to go through World War Two again? So she and, loved war stuff. Yeah, I don't know why. It's like, can't we watch the Flintstones or something? It's like, <laughs> was that your favorite show? No, I hardly got to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> was there a show that was anything? Like, was there a show that was like this is Fred show every week? Luckily, I got a, a couple of times. I got to see uh, Shindig and oh, yeah. Hullabaloo. Right, I like those because I always liked uh, Motown. And so uh, while she's watching uh, all those war things, I'm playing records. <laughs> the exact opposite. Yeah, of yeah. Things. I watch TV. Get get my father out of the house and watch. Uh, Soupy Sales and Zachary and oh yeah right because you get Zachary from New York right yeah Officer Joe Bolton and the Three Stooges did you always gravitate towards like sci-fi horror stuff because that always kind of weaves into that and all the comedy stuff that and silly comedy yeah which kind of go hand in hand they're sort of the same uh -huh. thing in many ways well yeah a lot of the ones that were on TV <laughs> do you have a was there a movie that you discovered on Zachary or one of those late night shows that just like is one of your all-time favorites now well Zachary would i don't know he didn't really show movies as much as have like a crazy shtick he'd show little bits of movies where somebody would be 
chasing somebody or biting their neck, and then it would cut to him looking from behind a building, laughing. Yeah. Um, well, actually, we had million dollar movie, and I think that's how much a lot of the movies cost, if if that. Um, but I got to watch uh, probably since it was on every year, uh, Forbidden Planet. That yes. be- that became my favorite. Yeah. And then uh, First the Beast watch- from 20,000 Fathoms oh, yes. gave me nightmares, and the original um, Invaders from Mars gave me nightmares. That still gives me nightmares. I Even the remake, actually, I find yeah. absolutely terrifying. I... Uh, I had Lorraine Newman on the show, and I was telling her how uh, when I first saw that movie, because she's the mom in that, my dad thought it'd be really funny to put a Band-Aid on the back of his neck, because that's uh-huh. how they indicated the parents oh, had been like uh-huh. compromised by the thing, and it was absolutely terrifying. And she was like, that is <laughs> not nice. <laughs> so you always gravitated towards so the sci-fi stuff. Is that just just That's you what ever? I liked. That's what I liked. Did your siblings like that? That's dinosaurs. Well, right. well um, where I... I don't know where my mother would go because my father worked at night, but um, late at night she'd go to bed early. We'd watch horror movies, like the really scary ones, but it'd be up to me to sit through them. They'd all go in the bathroom, right? And then as soon as the scary part was over, it was up to me to tell them what happened because they didn't <laughs> want to watch. So would you ever make it scarier? You're like, oh, this is my. Chair. Would you play it down? Like, uh, yes. I just want to, you know. Hurry up, the commercial's on. What happened was blah, 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 blah. Right, you know, right. Sit down and let's, you know. Let's get on with you, it. Tell you run it, you know, we have to go go to the, quote, bathroom again. So it's probably all like the Hammer movies and that kind of stuff. Oh, those? yeah. It was, yeah. It was scary stuff. Dracula. And, yeah. When uh, when did you decide you wanted to do music? Because it sounds like you were watching a lot of the music stuff on TV, like Shindig and those shows. And I think Zacherly actually hosted, as John Zacherly, a, a teen dance show called like Teen Beat or something. Oh, he did? Yeah. Uh, that might have been another... That wasn't in, we didn't, I don't know if we had Teen Beat in New York, but that might have been early 60s. Um, I watched a lot of Saturday uh, morning television, but that was, but that was like late 50s, early 60s. So that was probably the first era of the Hanna Barbera made for TV stuff. Like Those stuff. You watched like Clutch Kitty, Cargo. Kitty O Village. What was Kitty O Village? They had a show called Video Village where people actually, uh, walked on spaces and got things, uh, gifts and, or had to give back things and. Oh, is this the thing with the, you had the screen on top of the screen? You had to draw on it? No, no, no. Oh. You, li- you rolled the dice and you would jump from space to space and each space had, uh, like something on it, like, um, win 50 bucks and whoever got the most money at the end. One and they oh, also it was had, a game show. they had, yeah, it was a game show and they had Kitty O Village. Oh, that was like the kids, so the kids, kids version show. of it. Yeah, did I you, love that. Did you ever go into Manhattan or see tapings of anything when you were growing no, up? Or, no, yeah. no, yeah, we didn't have that kind of money, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> How far away from New York City were you in New Jersey? Uh, we uh, down the shore, so oh, okay, like, so pretty it, far. Yeah, it would have been like an hour and a half bus ride or something. Did New York seem a million miles away. Like, was it evident that they were shooting stuff there? Because especially then, the majority of shows were shooting there. Oh, the yeah, we watched and- Bo's. I mean, a lot of the shows were live. Soupy Sales was live. Bozo the Clown. Um, Officer Joe Bolton, who had the Three Stooges. Zachary. Soupy Sales, which was my all-time favorite. Still is. I mean, I get together with some of my grammar school friends, and we watch the old episodes, and we just start howling because they're just so ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and Andy Devine. Everyone check out the Andy Devine show. That is, like, surreal. They had this character named Froggy, the gremlin, who just insults people and says horrible things. <laughs> Puts bee, like, he has this school teacher, and he goes, there's a bee in your bonnet. And she goes, there, there is not. And he puts a bee, it looks like a bee, in somebody's hair. And, he, <laughs> and then she runs out screaming. I mean, it's like, now I realize how warped I am. You know? Well, I mean, they were making all that stuff up as they went along at that time because it was new. I mean, when I look at the Ernie Kovac stuff, which is so bizarre, <laughs> you know, the monkey band and just all that. The, uh, I read an article in, in an old TV guide, actually, where he had the um, the ant circus that he had, or the world's strongest ant was one of the things he did on his show. And it was, you know, just a, not a real thing. <laughs> but they got over a million pieces of clothing and furniture people had built 
for this ant. For the ant? Oh, and Lord. they had a picture of him with it all lined up on this table that just there people you go. had shipped in. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> yeah, spending time making things for a fictional ant, <laughs> what people used to do. Uh, when so Then you moved to Georgia for college? Just college, yes. Yeah, yeah. Had and you, then I stayed there, thank God, Yeah, because I dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Had you ever been down south before that, or had you pretty much just uh, no, no, I'd never been. Uh, no, I'd never been down south. Had you? Did you have any sort of preconceived notions of it from TV, like Petticoat Junction or like uh, Green Acres kind of? Well, Ath- Athens was it was sort of post hippie era, so Athens was pretty liberal compared to the rest of the country. Yeah, like yeah. you know, go outside the town is like, Ugh. yeah. Scary. It's that Austin, Texas kind of thing where people are like, it's the it's such a liberal city. I'm like, oh, you've never been out of Texas. Yeah. It sure is, but compared yeah. to other places, not so much. Uh, was there a, a show that you, aside from Soupy Seals, that you revisit now that you're just like, is like a comfort show for you? Or is that kind of the Well, I've been, I've been watching uh, Gilligan's Island, uh, The Best of Carol Burnett. Uh, love that. Um there's, there was a TV show called I Mary Joan, and oh, yeah. my favorite. She's probably one of my favorite comedians because she just had this sad sack. Before Lucy, there was Joan Davis, <clears throat> and I find her funnier. Um, and I think a lot of the scripts were stolen from her. Yeah, she was uh, the few episodes I've seen of that. It's a little, it's a little less slapsticky. It feels like it's a little more verbal sometimes. sometimes it's a little she's, more. She do, she more always does something wrong. Yeah, and. Um, it's a. It's not as slapstick as Lucy, because it sounds like they had to do dialogue because it was uh-huh. probably a real oh yeah, thing. It, and uh, Jim Backus played her husband. Oh yeah, that, was that the first thing he was on? Because that's before Magoo. That's before... one of yeah. This was fifty. I saw it in reruns, so I saw it in the mid fifties, and I think it was fifty two to fifty five. Wow. Was there uh, anyone you met once you guys started? Uh, playing out more and getting more high profile that you had watched growing up that you were just totally starstruck by? Um, oh, Claude Kirshner. He had a TV show. Um, and I used to watch Laughing, and now uh, Ruth Buzzy comes to our shows. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> that she, must be I think bizarre. she's hysterical. Oh, yeah. She was probably the funniest thing on that show, I think. Her and Joanne Worley. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Those two. Oh, boy. <laughs> Was there uh I think the first time I saw you guys on TV was probably SNL in 80, maybe. That might have been one of the first. Terry Garr yes. hosted. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then she goes on Johnny Carson and says, I just heard the weirdest band. Oh, did she? I've never uh-huh. seen that. They were called the oh. B-52s, and they did this song called Rock Lobster. Of course, she became Miss uh, Easy Listening Radio yeah, in yeah. New York. And Johnny Carson goes, well, you know, to each his own. <laughs> but, I mean, so few people, there was only three networks, so I bet a ton of people who anyone goes on a show like that and goes, I heard the weirdest band, would be like, I need to hear that band. I yeah. mean, that's what I would do at least. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, apparently all the people I didn't talk to in high school were calling each other going, did you see, that was Fred Schneider on TV. Because of the SNL thing? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I mean, that was the height of the first cast, really, of that last it was. Season. Yeah, I still had every all the majors. Yeah, was that where you completely terrified that you were going to be on oh, live we television? Oh, we were totally nervous. I mean, we were paralyzed with fear, <laughs> but you know, we got through it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know. Were you an SNL watcher? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I liked, I liked SNL. What's, who is um, Carol Burnett your favorite sketch show or laughing? Or? That, well, I like, I liked them all uh, pretty much equally. And then, I, uh, well, in the 70s, I watched... Um, Mary, uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so weird that show. And we had in the in the mid seventies, we had James Brown's Future Shock. James Brown. He had a show in Atlanta called Future Shock that came on um, in the evening, and it it was him hosting a dance show, and the kids had to be like twelve, and they're all just trying to hog the camera. And we're talking James Brown, James Brown, James Brown, the James Brown. <laughs> wow, uh, I can't imagine him coherently hosting anything. <laughs> Oh, he was fine. I mean, yeah. he's one of my faves. So. Yeah, I mean, I love... I bought a TV just to watch that and Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. But then I glued the TV because it was loose, glued the dial, and I accidentally glued it between stations, so... <laughs> so now you're getting like a weird mashup. <laughs> oh, yeah, of I was like, forget it. <laughs> now I'm picturing someone watching at the same time Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, and James Brown, and I'm like, that would have been a good work. mashup. Yeah, that would have <laughs> been a good mashup. I mean, I I had never heard that he had hosted a show, and I cannot believe it, it would sound crazy now to someone like James Brown to be just hosting a dance show. Yeah, it was 70s. a half-hour dance show in the mid-70s. 
dance shows were a totally uh, lost sort of genre, I think, where it's, I mean, there was tons of them from the 50s up to the 80s, and then it just totally disappeared. I yeah. Club MTV might have been the last one. I, that was great. I loved Shindig. I loved... Uh, Even American We had then. American... Well, that, that was Which sort was of lame. Little, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had Shindig, Hullabaloo, then we had Clay Cole, and we had Lloyd Thaxton... And what was great is we'd have a lot of the, like the Shangri-Las we were on every other, like every other month. Yeah. And they were one of my favorites. Oh, so great. a lot of, all the great, just, if it made the top 10 in New York, I just assumed it was top 10 around the country. <laughs> right. Which isn't that far off. I think. Well, a lot of, stuff. A lot of them were. Never. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Oh, I loved Soul Train. That was, especially growing up here. Oh, Where yeah. we had like no black music really on the radio. Mm. And, and, and Sometimes Soul Train, I'd have to actually try to get it from Rhode Island because some of the stations here wouldn't air it. Oh, brother. What we, we get preempted by is Candlepin Bowling. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> so I was like, I got Soul Train. I mean, I like Celebrity Bowling, Barbara Eden for Despair. That was you know. one of my favorite weird things. Uh, <laughs> I People, and this is, this is true, bowling was the most watched sport on television until the mid-70s. Bigger than football, basketball, and baseball. It got the highest ratings of any sport. Well, it has to be like sort of people you watch on TV. Uh, guys getting spa- uh, st- uh, strike after strike after strike. It's kind of not interesting. Yeah. You but, know, Barbara Eden for the spare is way more yeah. interesting. Will she Will she get it? <laughs> were you a bewitched or were you an I Dream of Genie? I feel like people had to be one or the other. Oh. Oh, master. <laughs> um, that was... I liked them both. Well, I, I guess because, let's face it, Andorra. Yeah. Got, <laughs> yeah. And Uncle Arthur. Yep. <laughs> Agnes Moore has one of my favorites. And yeah. I mean, Paul Lind. Who doesn't love Paul Lind of uh-huh. anything? And Andorra. Yeah. Oh. She was great. She was an Academy Award winning act from Boston, actually. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, she grew up in Lynn, Mass. Wow. Um, and uh, the cast was incredible. Uh, it, that show I rewatch often, and I feel like it holds up. And the original funny. Gladys Kravitz. Yes. Is- Yes. Uh, yeah, that I, I, I love that on that show. And I feel like it's those two or Munsters versus Adams Family. I, I'm always I like the Munsters. You're a Munsters guy. But I, I, like the, I like the Adams Family too, but the Munsters are just so ridiculous. Yeah. Were you a monster? Would you, were you like a 60s monster kid? Were you like a, did you ever read famous monsters or collected uh, monster stuff? No, but we, we made horror movies in the 60s. Uh, friends of mine and I, we did Day After the Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> Did you? When did you first see Night of the Living Dead? Did you see it? When the, it came out in the theater. You started in the theater? Yeah, my, wow. I went with my brother and he threw up. <laughs> do you remember what made him? Do you remember what scene it was? I just, when he walked out, he threw oh, up. Oh, it was after like a roller coaster. He got yeah, and like. Reacting. I mean, it was like, oh, God. <laughs> That's the sign of a good film. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you throw up, yeah. it's good. Unless it's like something like. Uh, Blair Witch. It's just or uh, The Sound of Music. Oh, yeah. That would make you throw up <laughs> just from the saccharine nature of it. Um, I think the only movie that I ever vomited was the David Cronenberg remake of The Fly. Was the oh, one that okay. Me I saw that. That didn't make me queasy. Yeah. Produced by Mel Brooks, weirdly. I had a stress attack after seeing Alien. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a haunted I thought husband. I was having a, a stroke. I <laughs> that is terrifying. I had a stress attack, yeah. And do you think it was just completely triggered by Alien? Oh, it was. I had to go right to the hospital. I thought I was having really? a stroke. Really? Oh, you actually went to the hospital? Yeah, and as I'm walking up to the emergency room. So he goes, hey, are you Fred Schneider the b <laughs> <laughs> Did you be like, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, that's always, I imagine, the most inopportune moment when people well, yeah, recognize Yeah, either you. that or you're like in some weird place in like a pharmacy or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the last place you want <laughs> yeah, anyone yeah. to recognize you. Can I take a pilot out? <laughs> Did your mom watch you on TV? Like when you were on SNL? Oh, was, yeah. My yeah. grandmother too. They loved it. Yeah, so I imagine that because I always, everyone I talk to who is successful in entertainment their parents always have a weird thing where they're like, oh, now you've made it. And it's usually not the thing you think of. It's like, I know you were on TV a bunch of times, but once you made it on Hollywood Square, like whatever weird thing it oh, is. Oh, you have to be hot. Yeah, like that's when they're like, well, oh, like it's Hollywood real. Hollywood Squares too, but that was daytime. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's the homesick from school kind of mm-hmm. thing when you watch it. When you first got your own TV, were you just like in heaven because you could watch whatever you wanted? You didn't have to share it with six other people? Oh, yeah. Or? Well, I always had record players. Um, I didn't always have TVs. I always had record players. So you could always go listen to whatever you wanted. Yeah, I didn't even have a phone half the time. <laughs> well, who needs it if you're listening to records? Yeah. Did you collect Monster Records? Was that uh, like the I have a lot songs? of them. Yeah. But uh, I, 
Motown, mostly soul. Right. Soul, funk, and Motown were my favorites. But I, I mean, I like rock too, like Led yeah. Zeppelin and all that. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, for a while here, a bunch of in the 90s, the record stores just didn't care about soul and surf records for some reason. So I used to get them for nothing. And I got oh, some yeah. great, like, William Bell stuff. And yeah. It just it was, it was crazy. Um, Three for a dollar at Zare's. Yes, at Zare. Yes. My father bought, I went to buy a monkey at Zare when he was a kid. They oh, sold God. spider monkeys. Oh, that's terrible. And, outfits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he saved up. And then when he went there, they had just stopped selling them. And he, he literally was mad if he hadn't saved up for the outfits he could have purchased the oh. monkey, <laughs> which is like, all right, Zare, that's a little strange to, to sell there. Is there a, a person you always wanted to meet that you got to just even you were like too scared to talk to or you, you ran into him at like an award show or anything like that from when you were a kid? I've met a lot of people that I uh loved as a kid i mean we did the nick at night awards so i got to meet like barbara felden wow uh trixie from the honeymooners tina louise oh wow wow (laughs) she goes to all the art openings um julie newmar uh ruth buzzy yep yeah Pee Wee. i mean yeah i'm very been very lucky paul mccartney and david bowie and wow where'd you meet bowie he came to our show in New York when we were wow. starting out. Wow, that must oh yeah, because he was living in New York then. Right? Yeah, that, did he talk to you guys? After yeah, you? he came backstage and talked to us, and he would invite us to his shows. I mean, and he whenever I would see him, he'd remember my name, and I just my jaw would drop. Yeah, because you're like that's David Bowie. <laughs> and uh, when I inducted Martin the Vandellas in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, Jimmy Page came up to me and said, "Oh yeah, I bought your first single," and my jaw just. <laughs> drop then and there too yeah and then i met uh brian wilson and he was telling martha all the times they worked together and wow i mean it's 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 amazing that people because i'm sure you people get that same reaction meeting you for and some I don't, stuff I, I just feel like uh, hello there's, there's much <laughs> right. more interesting people to meet than me i mean look how i'm dressed well but i mean you're, he's wearing a three-piece suit everybody yeah uh, when you're you know you're sitting in your bedroom in new jersey listening to led zeppelin 45 you know jimmy page you know 20 years later is gonna go oh, yeah, i bought the music you made it's, well i, it's I bought all uh, their first four albums so how did you hear about music then? Were you listening to the radio or? I had a six it... transistor. My father would say, go take a walk. So, right. you know. You just wander around. Because I'd be, I'd be in my room reading Edgar Rice Burroughs sci fi <laughs> books. Right, right. Who I love. That's my, one of my favorite authors. Um, always has been. Um, so I just got hooked on. Just had, you know, might as well Head's, attached yeah. it to my head. Whatever whatever you could sort of bring in from the ether mm-hmm. that you would go, oh, what is that thing? And I'd do my homework in the kitchen and uh, listen to Detroit on the kitchen radio. Right. Because you get Motan, but that was my top ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that one of the things I talk about this show all the time uh, that is kind of missing from the post-millennial generation is the ability to stumble on stuff. Like, so many of the things that are my favorite things ever, I stumbled on. Yeah. And if you have access to everything at all times, you kind of are limited in a lot of ways because you can just stick with what you know. But like flipping through and seeing something or just hearing a song on the radio is life-changing for, mm-hmm. for a lot of us. Um, and I think we're, we're kind of missing that. I don't know how people necessarily kind of discover things they like now without already knowing about them. Uh, we have to go on YouTube. Yeah, and just go down a hole and see what you Well, then I, well, I would just type in obnoxious children singing, <laughs> horrible birthday parties. <laughs> That's what you look at. It does. <laughs> You're like, now I'm a fan of this I keep kid. Say, I keep saying I'm going to, you know, check out this new band or whatever, and I always wind up with some horrible kids singing. <laughs> Did you, uh, although there are some weird good kids singing stuff, like Bowie um, found that... Um, What's the uh, Langley School Music Projects record? Remember? Oh, I got that years ago. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. that was great. Yeah, that was the I thing. Have that, that, yeah, so that's a wonderful. It's record. great, and I think I think that got re-released because Bowie found it in a charity shop or something. I was like, this is great, and then managed mm-hmm. to get it re-released. Oh, okay, so, I'm, well, bizarre. May he rest in peace. What a wonderful guy. When you um, did you guys get TV Guide or did you get the newspaper? Did oh you yeah, we got listens? TV Guide. And yeah. Go through it and then realize we're not going to be able to watch it. So it's almost worse to have it because yeah. you know what you're missing. Well, at least I can figure out, you know, as long as, you know, Beanie and Cecil is still on. Yes, I love Beanie and I love and Beanie and Cecil. I should, yeah. I should get, I bet I'd still like it as much. It's still really funny. All the Bob Clampett stuff mm-hmm. totally holds up and it's just bizarre. And I actually really liked the, um, the 80s 
remake series of Beanie and Cecil. Oh, they, they did. did. Oh, okay. It was when they were doing um, they were doing a new Felix the Cat and a new Mighty okay. Mouse and kind of really kind of digging into all those old fifties and sixties shows. Okay, yeah, I love Beanie and Cecil. I loved especially the maps they'd make. Yes, it was such a weird show, and it was it was really weird. And he they go in the desert, and you'd have this just this big head <laughs> on with a. Uh, blanket around it on a camel yeah and you're like what i think that those shows didn't didn't talk down to kids but partly i think it's because they were just like i don't know whatever what they were bizarre oh, well so was soupy sales it was just the humor i mean i got it but i could tell you know except for the slapstick the jokes were some of them were just dirty oh yeah oh and soupy sales absolutely yeah there was a lot of double entendre on that show oh boy. Uh, it's it's shocking now rewatching some of that stuff um, cause you kind of expect it to be kind of a little more innocent than it is, but it's, like... it's not, <laughs> um, but I imagine if there were parents watching it with kids who were like, uh Oh, or if they just were like, ah, no, Oh, I knew my father, I knew my father wouldn't let us watch it. So I would set his, his alarm clock an hour ahead. So he'd leave. Oh, really? <laughs> Send him to work early. He yeah. never caught on. No. Wow. That's pretty ingenious uh, to come up with that. And then you guys were in the Flintstones movie. And yes. You just said it wasn't you know, your favorite show, but how weird is it oh, to I be like... Oh, I like the Flintstones. I mean, I love the gadgets, like the... Oh, the, all the dinosaur gadgets? Yeah, the and the uh, the bird playing the records. And... Right. How weird was it to be in like a real-life version of a cartoon? Oh, it was great. It was, it was a major production, and they treated us royally. Yeah, I mean it was it's a huge set piece in the movie uh, when mm-hmm. you guys show up. We did we did the uh theme and we also did two other songs. Uh Keith wrote really a really great techno version of the uh, theme too that's on the C D. Right, right. Is that what's your favorite T V theme song of all time? Uh oh boy. I ask all musicians, I'm sorry to spring it on you. <laughs> I mean that is a good. Well, one. I do like I do like the Adams Family theme. I, I like the Flintstones theme. Uh, Vic Mizzy, I think, did the Adams Family and also did Green Acres and had those really oh, weird green, sounds. Green. You know? I, I'm watching Green Acres at first. I, I didn't think I like Petticoat Junction now, I, and I didn't care for Green Acres. Now I like Green Acres, and I think why did why did I like Petticoat Junction? This is boring. Way. It really is, and Green Acres That's is incredible. so much better. It's so much better, and it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, and Eddie Albert is my favorite angry guy on t- like he's always just this seething rage. Uh huh. And she's always in um in a in a peg noir. Yes. <laughs> and oh, it's just she's so funny on that show and underrated. And I know Eddie Albert doesn't say God damn it, but everything he sounds like mm-hmm. it says sounds like God damn it. It's like and, God damn it, hey. <laughs> and the, uh, the Zipples and Arnold Pig goes to Hollywood. Yes, I mean, that's entertainment. Do you remember the one where Arnold got drafted into Vietnam? Oh, God. Now, I, I, I'm going to buy all the. That's what I like about people say. Oh, just uh, just uh, you know, get it on Netflix. But you know, after you type in, and then all of a sudden you realize your one letter's wrong, five words back. Yeah, you have to start over. It's like you know what? I'm just going to spend nine bucks and get season one through four you know <laughs> exactly and like i hate when it is nice to have the streaming stuff but i'm like all right buffering come on come on and i'm like i just want to watch the thing and a half hour show could take 45 minutes sometimes well, i think one of those tvs you can talk to but i haven't figured out how to do that i'm a little scared of those like they seem weird like i don't want it listening to me all the time or just like I, I don't know why I'm not doing anything wrong. Man, everybody, get one twice as big for one third the price, and yeah. I got mine like two years ago. It's like what the hell? It is insane to me having grown up with you know the biggest TV you could get was like twenty seven inches mm-hmm. and was like eight hundred dollars. Yeah, had a dial and you can get like a rabbit ears. yeah sixty inch <laughs> curved HD TV for like six hundred dollars. I'm like, that is nuts. That, that is, is totally nuts. nuts. Uh, and as someone who grew up reading sci-fi stuff, I, I wonder if this hits you like it hits me. I, um, you know, I walk around at night walking the dog and, you know, when people, I'm not peeping in people's windows, everybody, but I kind of am. When they're in their house and the lights are on, you can kind of see in their house. And mm-hmm. there's these old little suburban houses will have a whole wall television. Mm-hmm. And it's so 1984 and weird because in those sci-fi movies, everything was futuristic. But in reality, 
it's like a 1960s ranch house yeah. with a future wall. You yeah. know, it's really bizarre. Um, that always throws me off. I can't, uh, I still can't wrap my head around that. Um, but it's kind of great. It's yeah. kind of great. Anything in that TV guide? Uh, well, yeah. Give your attention say. there. Well, let's start with television, the comforting presence. Has anybody read this yet? <laughs> no, no. By Dr. Carl Menninger. The medium provides companionship and communal experience at a time they are desperately needed. Well, that's true, 1968. They yeah, needed something. That sounds right. We've... And then next is hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> then, the ads are great. <laughs> uh, take the activity booster. Which I think is just speed. It's just an yeah, ad for speed something. pills. Tyrend. Tyrend. It's called Tyrend. So look that up. T i r e n d. Sure, that's Mama's little helper. Oh, and is that a? Uh, no, I thought it might be Ava Gabor because I saw the word darling. Oh no! It's, <laughs> uh, actually, I love. I think everyone's a bigger fan of Ethel. I'm gonna yes. have to read this before yeah. I before you leave. Oh yeah, the articles uh, are great in some of these. Like mm-hmm. Isaac Asimov wrote for TV Guide, and it's it's well, crazy. Here, let's see. The rise and fall of the hippies. Okay. <laughs> 1968 was definitely when. Uh, did you ever see the Dragnet, the final Dragnet episode with Blue Boy? No. And uh, Jack Webb wrote and directed the episode, and he was such a straight laced anti. Oh, he was horrible. So that episode is about this guy who overdoses on LSD, and uh, uh, Jack Webb is like, "These kids are." It, it's it's the craziest anti hippie thing I've ever seen, and it's it's wonderful. <laughs> it's fantastic. But that's almost as good as when Lawrence Welk decided to do uh, contemporary pop in 1966, and he said <laughs> that uh, people were going to probably call in and complain <laughs> because he's you know, playing like a phil specter song it, was who was a bobby and sissy doing the <laughs> twist and all that so you said your grandmother used to make you watch that show right well no we thought she was having a heart attack once because she go carol that's my mother carol carol and we all ran what's wrong grandma the lennon sisters are back on <laughs> it's a big deal everybody were you a variety show fan because i mean that was the predominant oh yeah yeah well i i, I liked laughing um we uh let's see yeah my father wouldn't they wouldn't watch ed sullivan so i missed the beatles what was their problem with ed sullivan they just didn't like him i th- i forget what we i think it was bonanza on something i, uh, d- I didn't want to watch was on Oh, I remember Death Valley Days. Is that another Western? Was your mom a fan of that one? I could watch that, you know, brought to you by 20 Mule Team Borax. <laughs> you always know, saw these Borax trains. <laughs> Let's see what else is on here. Uh, well, she wouldn't watch Jackie Gleason because he was divorced. Oh, really? She wouldn't watch anybody divorced. Really? Mm-hmm. Was she uh, Catholic or? Yeah. yeah. Of course, she liked Bing Crosby, who tortured his kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he oh, wasn't sea divorced. Hunt, I like Sea Hunt. Sea Hunt was Lloyd Bridges, I yeah, think. Yeah, and his, his first kids, yeah. 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 Uh, get Smart. Well, I had a crush on Agent 99. I actually had a wallet that had a little picture, because she was a model. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I got to meet her. So luckily, we got to watch uh, Get Smart, though. I would have wanted to watch Honey West. Too. I love Honey West. What a, I mean, if you're at a, um, a Forbidden well, I Planet bought, fan. I bought the complete. Yes, Honey I did West. too. That show, I don't understand why that show doesn't have more fans now. It's such a weird, ahead of its time show, but also so like swinging 60s with the uh-huh. serval cat and she, she knows was Kung gorgeous. Fu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's in maybe my favorite comedy of all time, The Love God, uh, the Don Knotts movie, if you've ever oh, seen okay. that. Uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, that sounds good. That's it, Don Knotts is uh, John Waters crush yeah uh yeah i think didn't he uh he's got a painting of him or something on one of his christmas cards one year or him and uh-huh. steve buscemi dressed up like don Knotts. i think he said well i have the one of don uh steve buscemi dressed as looking john like john waters uh let's see uh oh, my three sons with sappy uh, we yeah. really it was on too long <laughs> there a lot of good movies that i well, we had million dollar movie, and they always showed Rodan, Crawling <laughs> Eye, uh, Hold That Ghost, where I first saw Joan Davis, and Abbott and Costello. Um, what, oh, The Beast of Twenty Thousand Fathoms, yep. which used to give me nightmares. Ray Harryhausen. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Were you an Outer Limits, Twilight Zone guy? Or? Love Twilight Zone, and my favorite show. Actually, my favorite show in the '60s was The Invaders. I love The Invaders. So I got yeah. I got the complete. I think there's only on two, two seasons. Two seasons. I, I got yeah. that complete. That's another show that I feel like doesn't get enough uh, love. That never really comes up that it much. It was great. It was probably against something 
my mother would watch. Yeah, I think Larry <laughs> Cohen worked on that show, who did like Cue the Winged Serpent and oh. the Stuff and all those uh, really bizarre eighties movies. Yeah, look, 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 the Manster Boy. Oh, Manster's a great movie. Hollywood Palace. I liked Hollywood Palace. I have a great episode of that that Frankie and Annette host. And oh, it's, really? Uh, all beach party themed. It's really great. Oh, can you buy a, a Hollywood Palace on? No, but I DVD? could. I could hook you up if you okay. want. Okay, that I would like to see. <laughs> it's really good. I and know, the one with Mrs. Uh, Miller. I was a big fan oh, of yes. Mrs. Miller. Okay, Mrs. Miller. That one. Or? No, no, Mrs. Miller, the singer. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved her. I always am grateful that we benefited from things being cheap <laughs> so all these channels really bought cheap. these movies for nothing it's just why we got to watch all these b horror movies and mm-hmm. you know old serials and all this stuff that we literally only saw because the networks got them for yeah, I used to on saturdays i go over to my friend jolene's house my best friend in grammar school we'd watch horrible movies and do what they do on uh MSC mystery Green. science yeah. theater yeah We'd watch the um, Miss USA pageant. I watch that every year still. I don't know why either. I would always watch all the pageants out of like some weird car crash. Thank God we missed Catholic hour, but then (laughs) that was way too early for my mother. Um, (laughs) Let's see what else is on. Um, Sundays were the family hour. You had like Wonderful World, Disney would be on at 8. Oh, Flipper. I liked Flipper. Wild Kingdom. Did you ever see the movie Shockwaves? Mm-mm. It's a it's a 1979 movie shot in Florida and it's about underwater Nazi zombies. Oh. And Peter Cushing is in it and um, John Carradine is in it. But the ma- the boy from Flipper is in it as an adult. Oh, okay. And it's like the only other thing he did uh, after Flipper. And it's really weird to see him in it because he's he's one of those child actors mm-hmm. that just grew up to look exactly the same but with a mustache. <laughs> like it doesn't it just <laughs> doesn't very, quite work. Oh, yeah. very seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Mikhail's Navy, which I didn't like at the time. But you oh, wait, visited, the monster like, of Mikhail's Island. What is that? Oh, is Admiral Hanson's son, Bruce, who tells his father about every infraction of naval... Well, that's what they do every... Mikhail and yeah, why is Hanson that a Parker get in trouble, and they report to uh, Captain Binghamton, and then Captain Binghamton... <laughs> I've got that now. <laughs> it's no, a misunderstanding. You know. Yeah, uh, oh, oh, you, Bonanza. Ugh. Were you a Phil Silvers fan at all? That's probably one of my favorite shows at that time. No, I, I didn't watch that. What the, oh, the, you, oh, I see what you... See, you have every day at some time you have the same movie. Here's the death ray of Dr. Mabusi. So we had... Um, uh, Million dollar movie, like I said, in each movie, it like showed the cost same about movie every day for a week, right? Was Shake that... hands with the devil. Oh, I've never heard of that. That sounds oh, that's, pretty that's, good. Yeah, well, it doesn't look good. <laughs> it's about the rebellion. Oh, that's boring. <laughs> boring. That, that would be one of those movies. I would see the title on TV guide, watch it, and be very angry that uh-huh. I was deceived by okay, that here title. Here we go, Gilligan's Island. I would watch that. Well, try to watch that. I think that's before my mother would turn the, you know, take control. Did you? Oh, we watch laughing sometimes. Did you talk to Tina Louise uh, about oh. Gilligan's Island? No, no, no. Yeah, because she doesn't. She doesn't like to hear about that. You yeah. don't talk to Tina about Gilligan's Island. Yeah, yeah. Island. she's like the one who would not. I think she wished she'd never been on it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those people got typecast forever after those things, but I feel like she could have done plenty of stuff after because mm-hmm. um, she was stunning and a good actress and funny, uh, but for whatever weird reason, mm-hmm. just didn't. Uh, oh, Rat Patrol. We'd have to watch that. I did Ugh. not like Rat Patrol. No, yeah. boring. World War Two. Yeah, the World War Two and Western stuff never... Although I liked um, Branded. Oh, yeah, we the watched follow-up that. follow-up to The Rifleman, yeah. just because Chuck Connors was such a weird person to watch on things. He was. He yeah, awesome. definitely did not watch Peyton Plays. No, no. Uh, Carol Burnett, no. She was divorced, so we couldn't watch that. Wow. How did she know who was divorced? Did she read, like, the... the... I don't know. <laughs> I wonder yes, if at church well, they handed out a see, list. Like I said, it was more morning, so I would watch Captain Kangaroo. Yes. Dennis the Menace. Uh, was, Mickey Mouse Club. Was there a show in your school that, like every kid had to watch if you didn't watch it you just couldn't talk about it like it was the social capital for that school no we had so many different groups uh, my group watched Snoopy sales yeah that's how well that was the thing too like if if you saw the same movie someone else saw you're like oh we're friends now because we've both seen this thing uh-huh. it's such an unusual thing that we've seen 
and I always look at like a lot of the videos you guys made and a lot of just the sort of visual aesthetic is that sort of Atomica mid-century mm-hmm. stuff. And it, it, it always resonated with me because I think you, you were from that sort of first generation that grew up with television and started making art that mm-hmm. was influenced by that. And I don't know how conscious that was or if you were just like, we, we like this stuff that we watched when we were kids kind of thing or was it just a... Uh... Uh... Well, like I said, I watched, you know, go over to a friend's house and watch horrible, you know, bad yeah, yeah. movies. Do you still do that? Oh, I have a lot of bad movies, a lot of good movies, <laughs> a lot of serials, yeah, or yeah. Like a lot of TV shows. Right. Is there a, a show you're watching now or anything current that you're... Uh, well, I like The Walking Dead and I like... And what uh, I haven't watched uh, Fear, Fear the Walking Dead yet. Almost done with True Blood. Uh, and I got... The Joan Davis Show, uh, the best of Carol Burnett, you know that sort yeah. of stuff. Just yeah, stuff the classics. You stuff. can watch. Yeah, were you a Twin Peaks guy? Um, I was on tour so much that I didn't really get to watch it. Do you feel like you missed out on a lot of stuff in the eighties and nineties from touring so much? Mm. Or anything that you're like, man, not I really. <laughs> Somehow I managed to watch. Uh, Mama's Family, that became my favorite show. That's on so much now <laughs> on MeTV. I, I, I finally got just what, uh, what broke down and bought the whole. <laughs> the complete series. And it would have kept going, if, but the producer passed away, which is so sad. There's an episode I caught the other day where she does stand-up comedy. She like heckles a comedian. For some reason, Mama and the family go to a comedy club. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> like, All right, yeah. That's a little strange. If she's not on a wrecking ball to prevent a wreck, she's <laughs> yeah. heckling a comedian. It was one of those shows that I my, every sitcom that goes more than five seasons gets really bizarre because mm-hmm. they've kind of run out of everything to do. It just gets weirder and weirder. And it that does. show was definitely one of those. Looks like Connie Stevens is on every day in this TV. Con. Did she have a talk show? No, she's guest star. Oh, I get you. That should be a. Oh, here's the Invaders. Yep. Condition red figures. Though my mother would have watched Burke's Law, but I, somehow I got to watch The Invaders a lot. I loved Connie Stevens in, she was in Back to the Beach in 1989. Oh. That was uh, a Frankie and Annette doing like an update. And, and Paul Rubens in it as well as Pee Wee. It's a really oh, yeah. weird movie, but she's great in that movie. Oh, he had a crush on her. I, I actually uh, loaned uh, Annette. Uh, my copy of Annette Sings Anka. Really? So uh-huh. you'd met Annette? Oh. I didn't get to meet her, but she sent me a signed, an autographed picture, which was. Oh, you know, that's I still amazing. Have. Oh, yeah. 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 I have um, someone uh, I knew knew her, and, and when she passed away, they had a, a bunch of her stuff from Back to the Beach and like her uh, press kits and like her, oh, wow. her stuff. So I, I have it at my house now, and I've got a nice little case with some of the old um, the books they put out. The kids' oh. books, the Annette like mysteries. They were like oh, the yeah, Bobsy yeah, twins yeah. that they yeah, would have yeah, there. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, had, I had she was everyone's them. favorite musketeer. <laughs> she was. She was. I can't even name another musketeer from that. Oh, cast. I, well, I used to watch it at a friend's house at, when I was a kid. There was Darlene, who nobody liked, <laughs> uh, Karen and Cubby, the oh, young Cubby, ones, yeah. uh, Bobby, who went on to fame on Lawrence Welk. Uh, Cheryl, who I sort of had a crush on. Annette, I had a crush on. Um, I feel like you couldn't Karen. live in America and not have a crush on Annette at that time. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was va va boom. <laughs> Did you ever watch any of the Beach Party movies in there? Or, I mean, those were like a Sunday afternoon. I saw staple. those later. I saw those later. Yeah, I didn't see them in the, in the drive in. The, the, the only movies I saw when I was a kid was, uh, the nutty, the absent minded professor. Okay. And, one other one. Oh, Parent Trap. So were you? It sounds like you were mostly watching these movies on TV because yeah. you know if you don't have a lot of money, you're not going to the theater all no, the time. No, and um, with six kids, there's no way we're going to go to the movie. No, no. Even just from a tactical perspective, it'd be hard to wrangle that many kids in a public place. I tell you, I <laughs> lost its face, which actually was sort of boring. Though I do like June Lockhart. I um I did an episode with Mark Goddard who was. From Lost in Space a couple months ago. He lives around here. Yeah, he lives down at uh, the South Shore. And it was interesting because I never really thought of this before. The first season of that show was a little more serious in black and white. Uh-huh. And then it was competing against Batman. Mm-hmm. So they aimed it more at that audience, which is when it became all about and Dr. It became, Smith. And it was all Dr. Smith. And yeah. The robot. <laughs> robot. And, yeah. And it was always, 
let me at him. Yeah. Yeah. That basically. It got silly. It got a little cartoonish oh, at that point. Oh, it was ridiculous. But I mean, that, that sort of fed into that time. I mean, I just think of, you know, obviously Batman 66 was a campy show, but you know, as you go into the early seventies and the late sixties, you start mm-hmm. to get a lot more like the Sid and Marty Croft stuff and like that weirder sort yeah. of, uh, or Bob Denver from Gilligan on far out space nuts. Did you ever see that show he was in? No, that was really weird. Saturday morning kids live action show where Bob Denver is like a janitor that gets sent into space. I didn't really watch much TV in the 70s. When I went to college, I stopped watching. I did see the guy, you know, walk on the moon, but yeah. I, I stopped watching TV after that for a while. That's a pretty good place to stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, nothing else can beat this. <laughs> I, uh, we have an old um, 60s Magnavox that we were driving one day, and some people were throwing it out. I was like, you throwing that away? And the guy goes, yeah, I watched the moon landing on this. Oh, <laughs> so wow. I was like, I'll take it. Uh, Does it still work? It didn't, but I retrofit it with a flat screen inside, oh, so it cool. looks it looks like it still works. That it just looks good. That doesn't. sounds good. Um, but it was easy enough to do. Uh, but it's it, television to me was great. Where you know, if you, I didn't grow up with a lot of money either, but you were able to see hundreds and hundreds of really good movies oh, yeah, for yeah. free. You know, I you watch Citizen Kane on PBS, or uh, you know, in addition to the great. Bad oh yeah, movies. Channel Thirteen had good stuff. We never watched that. <laughs> and watch the quality things on the PBS station. F Troop. Never liked F Troop. Me I just neither. Couldn't. Patty Duke versus what? the Monsters at six thirty. That's a tough call. I mean, I'd go Monsters on that I'd one. I go Monsters. I do love Patty Duke though. I do like Patty Duke. You know what I've discovered? I didn't like as a kid because I thought it was boring. But I've rewatched and really enjoyed as a Donna Reed show. Oh really? Yeah, I'm. I am completely shocked, but for some reason, our dresses filled the doorway. Yeah, they were rather large. There were some petticoats going on there, but for she's a nutcase on the show. Like she's totally unreasonable all the time. Oh really? But for some reason, I'm like, oh, this. I, I always hated this, but I kind of enjoy it now. Well, I, I like what's her name, uh, Shelley Fabre singing Johnny Angel. Oh <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. She was told you are going to sing, and she says, she didn't want to sing, and then she has a number one record. Well, they were constantly trying to create those teen idols, too. I mean, it was... That's big money. Well, they did. Yeah, it's big money. Um, <laughs> we couldn't watch Dean Martin because he was divorced. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, this this um, Green Acre sounds good. Lisa tries to bring culture to Hooterville by starting an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's a little strange. That sounds... You know, I do need to get the complete se- series... I laugh out loud watching that show. It, to it's, this day. it's a tax write off because it's uh, research. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Better that than money for bombs. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think everyone would be very much in favor of people buying more Green Acres. Oh, yeah. And Star Trek. Love Star Trek. Yeah, because you, um, you were an er- early Star Trek fan, right? Oh, yeah. When yeah. it aired. Um, so you're in Trek Trekkies, too, don't you? You're in that documentary? Uh, yes. I mean, that yeah. everyone. Check out Trekkies too. When I saw who was some of the people in it, it is like nutty and did the theme song. Yeah. I mean, that show, there wasn't quite anything like it on television. I mean, it was, it, it wasn't as campy as something like Lost in Space, but it had sort of the allegory message stuff of Outer Limits and Twilight Zone. I well, mean, it tried, just... his, uh, Gene Roddenberry's. As we know, was his purpose was to bring all people together. I mean, you had an interracial TV show. Maybe Julia was the first, but um, Star Trek was a, a, all different races and types of people. Which yeah, and they were all got along, and it was great. It is a very utopian show. It's it is like, utopian. Yeah. He wanted, you know, hoping for a better world. Ha ha! <laughs> Good luck to you. Did you watch any of the updated Star Trek stuff? Like, were your next generation guard? Oh, yeah, I liked. Um, yeah, I like. I like. I like Voyager the best. Scott Bakula's Voyager or is he Enterprise? Voyager was Janeway. Yeah, Captain okay. Janeway. Yeah, I yeah. like that because they go to planets and there's monsters and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Do you have an all-time favorite monster? Oh. Well, I I, re- I realized that some of them, the the ridiculous ones, like the Gorn right. and something, there was another one um, that was on, it was just ridiculous, that well, I'm, I play this word game where you have to make words, and I keep 
that I go, oh, wait a minute, that was a monster on Star Trek. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a real word. Those don't count. It's no, a proper is, noun. It's, <laughs> it's a proper noun. The Gorn, that was it. Yeah. The Gorn, no, that's not a word. The Gorn is the green one with the weird horn and the fuzzy one? No, that's the other one. That's the, what is that? No, the Gorn was the uh, uh, alligator with the zipper oh, down the back. Oh, yes, yes, in the yellow the walking suit. walking alligator. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll get a million emails from Poo being like, how dare you confuse the Gorn with whatever that other whatever one Whatever that other one was. That, that was another one. I do like that now in the current day and age you can kind of buy a toy or a thing of anything. Like you could just buy Tribbles. I have a baby. Uh, well, the best thing in Vegas for a while was um, the Star Trek. Uh, oh, the bridge, ride. right? And then they had no the ride. Oh, it was a ride. Yeah, it was one of the first three D. Oh, whatever oh, those oh. rides. It was fantastic, and um, the gift shop they were selling. I mean, Kate got a um, statue of Uhura. <laughs> um, I've got. Uh, Star Trek ornaments and uh, uh, Baby Gorn and the other one, <laughs> whatever the thing with the, the horn. Thing with the horn. <laughs> yeah, it rhymes with horn. Um, so you guys all bonded over Star Trek and that stuff when you guys first met. Was there like a you all kind of liked the same stuff? Well, uh, like? we didn't have TVs. Yeah. Well, Kate lived in a shack with no running water. Um, I hadn't met Cindy until we did the band, and I don't think Keith and Ricky had a TV. I didn't have a TV, but we, we we were basically into music and having a just a crazy time in Athens. <laughs> yeah, which it sounds so like we didn't you don't need a TV. TV yeah, you don't need a TV at that point. Do you have a favorite video that you guys have done or like that you feel like is the best visual uh, thing or the um, best use of television? Uh, uh, the B-52 is my favorite, I guess, is Girl from Ipanema. Yes. Um, and with the Superions, it's hard because... I directed a bunch of them, and they're all just ridiculous. I guess Brute Cake or um, Crummy Christmas Tree. And I loved uh, Monster, which oh, was Monster, a great that video. Was, that, that's that's a good yeah, one. that yeah. was way fun. And MTV would always pull that one out at Halloween. Well, finally, but they wouldn't show it at first because they said the... <laughs> the innuendo? Uh, no, because <laughs> I explained that it's a monster. It's a dinosaur. Uh, the, there's a hot dog with a hat and they said it looked like a wiener. You, know, so. <laughs> you can't have a hot dog with a hat. I, I had, um, meanwhile, you know, someone's going down on, down in an elevator, you know, yeah. Oh, that's taking fine. Somebody's clothes off. That's fine. We will not have ship. We're not going to have a dancing hot, hot dog cartoon. I had a uh, Jerry Caselli from Devo on and he was telling me the notes that MTV used to give them. And, uh, one of them also involved a hot dog. They had a real problem with hot dogs. It was like a hot dog flying through a I mean, as if it was a show for innocents. I mean, it was trashy. Yeah, it's MTV. Everyone knows what they're in there. People want trash. They don't want to, you know. (laughs) Is there a a musical performance that you saw on TV that still sticks with you that just is kind of the best or one of the the best ones you remember seeing? Oh, boy. In the 60s, it was mostly lip syncing. Yeah, really. true. Hmm. That's a tough one, I know. A that's of, a tough one. No, yeah. I can't think of one. Because a lot of people I know, obviously... I'll think of one as soon as you leave. Yeah, that's fine. You can just email it to me and I'll put it in the outro. Um, but people have like, oh, I saw The Doors and Ed Sullivan, which you were robbed of. Yeah. Um, I'm able to see that sort of stuff. Um, you didn't see The Beatles. Uh, I think I saw Martha and the Vandellas on Ed Sullivan. That was great. There's a... I think it's an Ed Sullivan... No, it's a Shindig clip of Bo Diddley playing mm. with... And he's got a woman guitarist... Oh, was that, like, was unbelievably. that was yeah. the Duchess. Yeah, that that blew me away when I was a kid. Seeing, you know, I wonder what happened to her. I haven't been able to really find much about her because no. she's fascinating. Mm-hmm. She's tearing it up on that thing. Got to do the Google. Yeah, that's true. I've not heard of this Google. <laughs> Maybe I'll go on a YouTube clip. But I, I I searched for her and I couldn't really. I'm like, this is this seems like a person who would be ripe for finding out something uh-huh. about. Her. She she was one tough cookie looking. Uh, it sounds like you you know love uh, holiday records as well. Oh, um, I do. The uh, more horrible, the better. Yes, and there are plenty of terrible there holiday records. There are plenty of horrible ones. Do you, were you a fan of Christmas specials as well, or because some of those... I was sort of a curmudgeon. I mean, I wouldn't want to watch Gumby's Christmas or something <laughs> like that. You know, was there one that you ever that you rewatch or that you do enjoy? Um, I'm more of a, I can watch uh, Wizard of Oz over and over. Yeah, that is kind of a Christmas. That's tradition. Thanksgiving. Oh, that's at least Thanksgiving. that was a, that's a New York Thanksgiving. 
and King Kong. PIX used to show King Kong King every Kong. year. Uh, that's how I can tell if someone grew up in the tri-state area mm-hmm. from like King Kong Thanksgiving. <laughs> King Kong. Which is so weird. Did you see uh, Wizard of Oz when they did it in IMAX 3D a couple years ago? No. It was unbelievable. Oh, wow. I've seen that movie a million times and it was like a whole new movie. It oh, was wow. crazy. Um, it was really, it was kind of good that I'd seen it a million times because I could kind of just look around and mm-hmm. enjoy the weird, uh, weird setness of it. And I love the fact that two of the guys are from Boston and they have the most glorious old man Boston accents ever. Like uh, Jack Haley. Uh-huh. It's my heart. It's uh, fantastic. I need to get my cable fixed in New York. It hasn't been working for two years. So. <laughs> well, it can't be anything you're missing I that much. I, I basically watch. Uh, movies. Yeah. Did you have an all-time favorite movie? I think it's probably Forbidden Planet. Yeah, I love that movie. And I think the first electronic score movie ever. Yeah, That's one of the things that really was. resonated with me is how they, weird yeah, that they is. They have, uh, yeah, it's on uh, CD. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, Honey West is in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they both died within a uh, week of each other. Her and Leslie Nielsen? Mm-hmm. I always, I loved Leslie Nielsen and everything until people told him he was funny. Then he started hamming it up too much sometimes. Oh, really? Oh, when he's playing it dead straight, it's oh, yeah. hilarious. That that's what I like. I like saying the stupidest stuff with a seri- with a straight face. Yeah, which is you know, get smart is like that. Yeah, and, uh, I love Police Squad and all that stuff. That's the funniest humor. Yeah, that's, that's airplane. Really yeah, but once he started getting you know like Dracula dead and loving it and stuff, and he's like really, I didn't slept, see that. It's, yeah, it's like no, it's no, once it's you know you're funny, it's not funny. <laughs> Naked Gun. What is it? Naked, naked Gun. Gun. Yep. Naked those are the police movies. squad movies. But, uh, you know, like that's why Adam West was so funny and stuff because he'd play it just mm-hmm. absolutely dead straight. And you that had is, to. That's the funniest stuff. Uh, do you have a favorite comedy that's just like your, this is the best comedic sitcom or just the best example or it well, always I makes you laugh? I like Mama's Family and I Married Joan. Oh, did you keep anything from the Fl- Flintstone set? I have. They gave me a jacket, but I'm going to uh, donate that to uh, a charity that um i'm involved with uh for uh our one of our band that mates who passed away mm-hmm. recently uh benefits his family so i'm going to donate oh, great. that called all for paul and i have a menu oh nice one of the menus <laughs> that they had in the men in the scene we're singing and they're reading menus nice oh that's great are you a, a memento guy in general do you usually try to keep stuff I, that you do Certain things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have enough junk around. So yeah, same, <laughs> same. It was evident by the fact that I have all these TV Well, those guys. are entertaining, just reading some of the <laughs> some of the plots. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, that's mm-hmm. so, just so bizarre. Uh, and is it Where can they find that All for Paul um, charity if they want it's to It's online. It? Just mm-hmm. search All for Paul and it'll come all up. All for Paul. Okay, I'll put up links on tvguidancecouncil.com. And, and I think there's a link on our... Uh, the BPT's website. Oh, cool. All right. I will link that up. And uh, thank you so much. It's been thank great. Thank you. Enjoy it. There you go, Fred Schneider. Again, cannot thank him enough. What a nice guy. He's super busy, and it was so nice of him to take the time to sit down and talk to me about old TV. Definitely go to the B-52's website, see when they're coming to your town, and see how you can donate to the All for Paul charity. It is a great cause. Highly recommend it. I will also put links up on tvguidancecounselor.com, and you can follow them all there. Speaking of tvguidancecounselor.com, that is where you will find all things TV Guidance Counselor. If you would like to contact me, you can email me at tvguidancecounselor.com counselor at gmail.com or at ken at i can read.com i can read.com being my stand-up comedy site where you can also purchase tv guidance counselor merchandise we have a handful of enamel pins left with a great design by sam first from monsters are good a little sort of classic rca logo on a chrome metallic uh, red flake pin uh we have t-shirts we have work shirts which are super cool look like tv repairmen uh and uh, also you can buy all my comedy stuff there my albums or anything like that if you are so inclined Inclined. If you would like to see me in person, I will be at Denver Comic Con two weeks from today. Uh, I will be doing some live TV guidance counselors. I don't think I can announce who they are with yet, uh, but follow social media. I'm at Kenneth W. Reed on Twitter or TV Guidance on Twitter, uh, or join our Facebook page. Just search TV Guidance Counselor. I will announce who those are with. I am very, very excited about those. Uh, I, you will be absolutely blown away. I am excited to go to Denver, and the guest list they have at Denver Comic Con is fantastic so uh if you are unable to attend well i'll probably release those episodes as tv guidance episodes in the future but 
And that's where we are. Uh, if you have a convention you'd like me to go to, if you run a convention, email me. Uh, as I said, Ken and I can read or TV guidance counselor at gmail.com. If you have any questions, any feedback, love hearing from you guys. If you like the show, please rate and review it on iTunes or wherever you heard it. Uh, subscribe to the show if you like it. It is a huge help of getting the word out there. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. I've gotten some great emails this week. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you again next time on Wednesday for a brand new edition of TV Guidance Counselor. <laughs> type in obnoxious children singing <laughs> horrible birthday parties <laughs>